Before we get started, I just want to give a quick shout out to Flash Forge for sending out the Creator Max 3D printer and making this video possible. I'll be going over the Creator Max towards the end of the video, so if you want to know more about my experience and a few other things that I've printed so far, make sure to stay tuned. It looks like Samsung is set to release three different Note 20 models this year. Leaks are suggesting that we're going to see a Note 20, a Note 20 Plus, and a Note 20 Ultra. I'm not sure why we need so many models. In fact, the past few years, the Note series has been said to basically be a Galaxy S device with an S Pen. It wasn't too long ago when there was talk about Samsung just killing the Note series altogether. Regardless, let's go ahead and talk about the Note Trio. I have a Galaxy Note 20 3D model that I printed out using the FlashForge Creator Max 3D printer. I based the print off of the leaked Galaxy Note 20 dimensions. This should give us an idea as to the size of the Note 20 compared to the Note 10 and Note 10 Plus. The first thing I noticed was that the Note 20 is a pretty big phone itself. When compared to the Note 10 Plus, it's basically the same size when it comes to height. The leaked images also showed a boxier design, which my 3D model has. And when holding it in the hand, I have to say I'm definitely a fan. The second thing that was striking when holding the Note 20 model that I have here is how narrow it is. The Note 10 is quite a bit wider, which makes me believe that the leaked dimensions may be a bit off. The Note 20 should also be extremely thin, and based off the model that I've printed, I feel like it's going to feel really nice in the hand. The camera bump on the back is very much like the Galaxy S20. However, from the leaks, the cameras themselves look way cleaner. There's no sign of a headphone jack, and considering only the Note 10 Plus received a micro SD card slot last year, my guess is the Note 20 is probably not going to get a micro SD card slot. Battery wise, the Note 20 should be between 4000 to 4300 milliamp hours. Being that the Note 20 is nearly the same size as the Note 10 Plus of last year, I would lean closer to that 4300 milliamp hour size. It should be getting the Snapdragon 865 or the Exynos 990 and 12 gigabytes of RAM with possible storage options of 128 and 256 gigabytes. The Note 20 is expected to get a triple camera setup on the back consisting of a 12 megapixel main sensor, 64 megapixel pixel telephoto and a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle. Uh, basically, it's the same setup as the S20, so my guess is the front facing camera will be 10 megapixels. As for display, it's a bit unknown about the refresh rates and even the resolution, but it will be around 6.5 inches. Some rumors suggest that Samsung will remove the curvature of the display altogether and keep the Note 20 at 60 hertz and at full HD plus to keep the cost down, making this like an entry level flagship. Taking things up a notch, the Galaxy Note 20 Plus will be slightly bigger with a display size of around 6.9 inches, but still having that same boxier design, which I'm a fan of. The Note 20 Plus will for sure feature a Quad HD Plus 120Hz display, but based off of the rumors, it's supposed to have the same limitation as the S20 Plus. This means you can't use both at the same time. Like the Note 10 Plus, I suspect the Note 20 Plus will offer a micro SD card slot. It should also come in storage options of 256 and 512 gigabytes. The Note 20 Plus is likely to use the Snapdragon 865 or the Exynos 990 and RAM configurations of 12 and 16 gigabytes. Lastly, all of this should be powered by a 4500 milliamp hour battery. Now looking at the cameras, I believe the Note 20 Plus will have the same 10 megapixel front facing camera as the S20 or the S10 Plus. On the back side, things are definitely said to have changed. The S20 Plus will have a 108 megapixel main sensor, a 12 megapixel telephoto, and a 12 megapixel ultra wide. It will offer a 50 times zoom since the 100 times space zoom feature has been said to have been canned. Lastly, the time of flight camera has been replaced with laser autofocus and should fix any focusing issues that were present on the S20 Ultra. Moving on to the big boy, we have the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. There isn't a ton of information on this phone, however, images have recently surfaced showing that it is in fact real. Plus, we do have some leaks from several reliable sources. The Ultra is going to be wider than the Note 20 and the Note 20 Plus. Just think S20 Plus to S20 Ultra. This extra width is said to also increase the display size to 7 inches or more, which is getting kind of crazy. I mean, I don't know how you feel, but me personally, the S20 Ultra for me is like pushing the limits of being too uncomfortable to carry. According to rumors, the Note 20 Ultra will feature new HOP or HOP display technology. HOP stands for Hybrid Oxide Polycrystalline Silicon. This should have the same 20% decrease in power consumption that we see in LTPO displays like the Apple Watch has. 
However, it will combine the high resolution capabilities of LTPS panels like we know on the Galaxy S20 Ultra. Technically speaking, it should give us the best of both worlds when it comes to high resolution and low power draw. This means that the Note Ultra will supposedly run at 120 hz in Quad HD Plus without significant battery drain. That sounds pretty crazy, and I'll take it. Note 20 Ultra will also have a micro SD card slot and come with 512 gigabytes of storage and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Rumors have recently started pointing out that the Note 20 Ultra will be powered by the Snapdragon 865 Plus or the Exynos 992. It should also have a 5,000 mAh battery, the same one that's inside the S20 Ultra. The front facing camera is looking to be a 40 megapixel camera like on the S20 Ultra. And on the back side, we're looking at the same setup as the Note 20 Plus. However, I think this might change as we get closer to launch. At the very least, I think the Note 20 Ultra will have additional software features or shooting options not available in the other models. I haven't seen a ton of information regarding improvements to the S Pen, however, it has been said several are coming. One of these improvements is a slight design change to match the new boxier look of the Note 20. I'm not sure about the design change myself, however, you can surely expect several new enhancements and features that are associated with the S Pen. Also, these devices should be shipping with Android 10 and getting 11 shortly after. That said, you could expect a new version of One UI with several new features and enhancements that could possibly trickle down to older devices throughout time. Of course, you could expect new colors with these devices, with some colors being exclusive to the Plus and Ultra lineups, as well as region specific. As more information becomes available, I plan on 3D printing each model in order to give you guys an accurate representation in terms of size when it comes to each Note 20 device. Now, before I get into how I printed my Note 20 model, uh, do me a favor and let me know down below what you think about the Note 20 so far. Are you excited? If so, which model is most exciting to you? Uh, I wanna hear from you guys to so make sure you do that. If you're unaware of the Flash Forge Creator Max, it's a dual extrusion and multi-filament 3D printer that comes in just under 900 bucks. You get everything in the box that you need to get up and running and get started 3D printing at home. I do have a few annoyances, however, I'll save those for my review. The filament that I used to 3D print the Galaxy S20 model was PLA. I'm still new to 3D printing, so I can't really give you advice on what filament you should use. However, this particular filament worked fine for me. In order to find a 3D model to print, you'll need to visit different websites. For me, I found the best one, at least for the S20, on CG Trader. I'll link it down in the description. One thing I do want to quickly mention is that when you're trying to use a .obj file, some of them will cause the FlashForge printing software to crash. However, for the most part, .obj files work just fine. I just wanted to throw that out there. So once you've downloaded your file, you're going to import it into the FlashForge 3D printing software. Make sure that you orientate the model so that it correctly is positioned on the printing platform. For this particular model, since it doesn't have a lot of detail and it's pretty much one solid piece, we won't need to add any rafts or supports. The rest is going to come down to your print settings. So let's go ahead and dive into those. These are the settings that I use to print my particular model. However, depending on where you have stored your printer, if you're using the same printer as me or the type of filament you're using, your settings may be different. It took me around 11 hours to print this model, but it's pretty solid and I'm happy with it. I mean, it's not perfect by any means, but it was able to accomplish what I needed it to do. I've also printed out a cookie cutter for my wife, which she used to make bow tie cookies and recently printed out an Atomos Ninja V Sun Hood. The Sun Hood took me a few attempts and I had to adjust the settings several times before I was able to really dial it in and get a good model. But ultimately, I'm really happy with it and I'm happy the way it came out. If I were to give you just a few simple tips before I end this video, it's to make sure that your printing platform is level and to check this before each print. Pick up a few clear glue sticks in order to get your filament to stick better to the platform, uh, at least during printing. Make sure that after every failed printing attempt, you adjust your print settings in small amounts before reattempting or changing anything else. Lastly, replace the filament holders that come with the Creator Max with the free ones from Thingsiverse, uh, since the ones included with the Creator Max are proprietary to FlashForge filaments only. 
If you have any questions regarding the Galaxy Note 20 or the Creator Max 3D printer, make sure to hit me up in the comment section, or better yet, you can always reach out on social media. If you're interested in more 3D printer content, let me know and stay tuned for my review of the Creator Max. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know by giving it a like. Make sure to subscribe for more content just like this. Click the bell icon so you can actually be alerted when those videos are released. And of course, I will see all of your beautiful faces in the next video.